In this video, we're going to take a look at the mechanism of sort of a prototypical conjugate addition of cyanide to an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, and then dig into what is probably the most synthetically important conjugate addition reaction known as the Michael reaction. This reaction establishes a carbon-carbon bond between a stabilized enolate or analogous compound and the beta carbon of an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. And it's hugely hugely important in synthetic chemistry because like the aldol condensation, the products that come out can do further chemistry and they're structurally complex in and of themselves. First though, let's take a look at this sort of prototypical conjugate addition of cyanide to this alpha beta unsaturated ketone right here. So we can see from the products that cyanide has added to the beta carbon and this establishes a stereocenter so the enantiomer is formed in equal amount to this chiral product shown here, and the mechanism begins with nucleophilic addition of cyanide to the beta carbon. So this is a nucleophilic addition to a polarized pi bond. This pi bond, the carbon-carbon pi bond, is polarized as a result of the electron withdrawing effect of the CO double bond. Notice that the resulting structure here is an enolate. We were able to push the CC pi electrons over and eventually up onto oxygen to create an enolate structure here, and that enolate can be protonated at oxygen by the acetic acid that's in the reaction mixture to give an enol intermediate. So this reactive intermediate right here looks like a product of 1,4 addition, right? H added to oxygen 1, cyanide added to carbon 4. But this isn't, isn't where the mechanism ends, right? This enol is unstable with respect to its keto form, and there's acetic acid around that can an acetate that can catalyze this tautomerization, and it will do so to give the keto form predominantly, and this will be the neutral product of the reaction when all is said and done. It's also to, possible to imagine protonating the enolate directly on carbon to go straight to the keto form of the uh, product. It's not super important which you choose, although under these reaction conditions with acetic acid, I'd lean towards forming the enol intermediate as opposed to um, sort of directly using the enolate. For example, we might imagine even protonating the carbonyl oxygen prior to the addition of cyanide in the first place. The Michael reaction combines the electrophilic nature of the beta carbon and alpha beta unsaturated ketones and other carbonyl compounds with the nucleophilic nature of enolates. And in particular here, we focus on stabilized enolates. Enolates themselves actually give messy mixtures of 1, 2, and 1, 4 addition. They're intermediate in reactivity between Grignard reagents and, um, say, organocuprates. And so they will tend to give a messy mixture of products. However, if we tack on an additional electron withdrawing group to stabilize the enolate, then we get a very soft nucleophile that reliably adds in a 1, 4 fashion. The conjugate addition of a stabilized enolate or related stabilized anion to an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound is called the Michael reaction. And a sort of classic example of the Michael reaction is shown at the center of this slide. We've got a 1,3 dicarbonyl compound that is deprotonated under the influence of hydroxide base. Notice this position is highly acidic due to the two electron withdrawing connect, uh, carbonyls connected to this sort of doubly alpha carbon. When we take that and we treat it with this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, addition to the beta carbon occurs selectively to get a carbon-carbon bond between the doubly alpha carbon and the beta carbon of the electrophile there. And this goes via the stabilized enolate intermediate, as we'll see in a second. Before we get there into the mechanistic nitty-gritty, I do want to note the structure of this product because this is a general structural pattern that you want to look for when thinking about applying the Michael reaction in synthesis. This reaction creates a 1,5 dicarbonyl structure. Notice we have a carbonyl group at what I've labeled carbon 5. This is the carbonyl group that came sort of along for the ride with the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, the electrophile. And then there's a carbonyl group at carbon 1, and this was critical for the stabilized enolate, right? And we might have two carbonyl groups flanking carbon two if a dicarbonyl compound was used, although the other electron withdrawing group, as we'll see in a second, can be pretty much any resonance electron withdrawing group that we've seen in the past. So anytime you see this 1,5 dicarbonyl structure, 
you'll want to think about the Michael reaction as, the pos as a possibility for synthesis and any sort of redox analog of this, right, with a carbonyl group and maybe an alcohol at carbon one. We could think about getting there, making the key carbon-carbon bond between carbons two and three via a Michael reaction. So one five dicarbonyl products are the name of the game in Michael reactions here. And as we mentioned, the mechanism goes via nucleophilic addition of the stabilized enolate to the beta carbon of the electrophile. Electron flow like this. Notice that, the, that an enolate is the product of this reaction. In fact, and eventually that gets protonated to give the final product here where we, we end up with the keto form of the, the final product. All right. Now, there's a lot of structural diversity to the Michael reaction, and this is one of the things that makes it beautiful. Once you've started to recognize these compounds that, are, that have doubly alpha carbons with two electron withdrawing groups attached to a common carbon, you'll start to see the potential for the Michael reaction in all of these structures, regardless of the nature of the electron withdrawing group. So stabilized enolates and really any anion with two electron withdrawing groups stabilizing the negative charge are known as Michael donors, and these are nucleophiles. The left side of this table, which is 21.2 in the Clyden third edition text, shows several examples of Michael donors. So here we have a 1,3 diketone, very similar to what we looked at up here. Here we have the enolate of a malonate ester. This is the conjugate base of diethyl malonate right here. If we swap out one of the ketone groups in this for an ester, then we get the enolate of ethyl acetoacetate. We've seen that previously. This is a stabilized enolate, it's a Michael donor. Say we swap out one of those ketone groups with a cyano group. This is still a stabilized enolate. It's a good opportunity to pause and draw resonance structures to convince yourself that this nitrogen is sharing in that negative charge. We can also look at nitro-stabilized enolates. The nitro group is so electron withdrawing that even if this is an R group, these can act as Michael donors. And organocuprates, we remarked earlier, these are not enolates typically per se. The R groups can be, for example, plain vanilla alkyl groups, but the negative charge is stabilized in these compounds, and they're soft nucleophiles, so they do engage in conjugate addition selectively. On the other side of the coin, a wide variety of alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds and analogous compounds with an alkene connected to a resonance electron withdrawing group can act as electrophiles in Michael-type reactions. And these are known as Michael acceptors, since they're the electron accepting side of the Michael reaction, if you like. So the classic examples are alpha-beta unsaturated aldehydes and ketones, which you see at the top, but alpha-beta unsaturated esters and even amides also work in this reaction. Alpha-beta unsaturated nitriles also work, taking advantage of the electron withdrawing nature of the cyano group. And alpha-beta unsaturated nitro compounds are great for this as well. And in fact, conjugate additions to alpha-beta unsaturated nitro compounds um, have an important place in the history of illicit drug production, we might say. I'll let you explore that one on your own. On this slide, we're going to talk about the mechanism of the Michael reaction in detail using this sort of prototypical reaction of cyclohexane-1,3-dione with this alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde right here in the presence of KOH base. So this is a, going to be a base-mediated, as we'll see, Michael reaction. And it does require an acidic workup after uh, the reaction is complete, and we'll see the mechanistic reason for this when we reach uh, the near end of the mechanism. The first step is going to involve proton transfer at this doubly alpha acidic position. This is a heavily favored proton transfer, in fact, due to the acidity of that doubly alpha carbon, and the resulting structure is a stabilized enolate, and we can see that if we think about resonance structures in which the negative charge is delocalized onto the other oxygen. So this is a stabilized enolate, which explains why this proton transfer is quite favorable when hydroxide is used as the base. This enolate is still nucleophilic, that doubly alpha carbon. A nucleophilic addition of that doubly alpha carbon to the beta carbon of the alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde occurs next. So we're making a bond here between the doubly alpha carbon and the beta carbon of the carbonyl group. That's key. And notice 
this generates an enolate. And so this is basically reversible, arguably unfavorable, right? Because we've gone from a stabilized enolate to a not stabilized enolate, just a sort of plain vanilla enolate with only a, one other alternative resonance form, right? But at this point now, and, and by the way, here is that other resonance form of the enolate. At this point, we can protonate that enolate to give a neutral product. And notice, we still have a hydrogen at that doubly alpha carbon. And so the base, the hydroxide base that we just generated, can deprotonate again at that doubly alpha position to give a stabilized enolate. And again, this is really what's sort of driving things, right? Similar to the Claisen condensation, it's the formation of this stabilized uh, enolate product that really drives the Michael addition in the first place overall. And because the enolate is so stable, we need to add acid to actually isolate the neutral product of this reaction. So acidic workup with H3O plus or some acid like HCl, some specific acid, is needed to protonate the enolate product and isolate the neutral product out of this. And this just occurs mechanistically through a proton transfer to that doubly alpha carbon just to get the neutral structure back. So this is highly analogous to what we saw in the Claisen condensation where acidic workup was also needed to protonate a stabilized enolate intermediate. And notice we've made the one 5-dicarbonyl. We've got a 1-carbonyl, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this product with all those carbonyl groups can do all kinds of other exciting chemistry. To top it all off, we've made a carbon-carbon bond. And in fact, I haven't even touched on the fact that we have established a stereocenter right here. Stereoselective, particularly enantioselective, microreactions have been a heavily studied area of research over the years.